Well, hello out there. Hello out there in retro land. How are all of you wonderful people on this amazing Tuesday in October? Technically the second to last Tuesday in October because one week from today shall be Halloween. And that should be an interesting occasion. It always is. What's up, everybody? Thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much. Please, if you're just showing up and you haven't done so already, please do drop a like for me on the little like counter down there. <laughs> it does help the show out a lot. It actually helps our reach. It helps notifications go out to other people who want to see the show. And today we're on Tuesday instead of Monday, which is not is not too un uh, you know it, it's not something that's never happened before. Sometimes this happens. Mondays can be a bit tough sometimes. I mean, you remove these ultra awesome shades. Thanks, Snuffer Stuffer. Check out these shades. Any uh, what about that purple baby? Purple and gold for the JMU Dukes. <laughs> that's right. I'm here to uh, tell you things. These kids are ready. They're ready to take on the world. Seven and zero. Oh. They are ready. And I don't care what the NCAA says. <laughs> All right, folks. Again, thank you for coming in today. We didn't come to talk about sunglasses or sports. Unless you really want to. Mostly we came to talk about Toshiba and some other CRTs and some other thingies. And that's always a good chat here. So I'm happy to be here and I'm happy that you're here. While we get going, let's go back and uh, talk about the craziness that kind of happened last week. See, yeah, last week there were three live shows here in the bunker. And uh, the first two were as normal. Tuesday, and I think actually it was Tuesday last week, maybe. Maybe Monday, I can't remember exactly. Oh gosh, what's Cole got again? Well, he's here and he's chewing on something. And I had to change his light bulb up. Because uh, the other one started flickering. So we're back to that glow of the old warm, warm light there on the coal cam. So anyway, the last episode, my goodness, was a freaking <laughs> amazing mess of a show between three men. Myself, Mr. Mike Chi, and of course, Miss, of course... Mr. 8-Bit Esquire, and uh, I appreciate you all for coming to that show and hanging out extra late because it was not during the time I'm normally coherent. I actually had to take a nap before that show just so I could make sure I would make it to midnight because <laughs> I'm not, I'm usually an early riser, so I don't know. I hope I don't have to go over there and see what Cole's eating up, but he's, he's not up to any good. He's kind of been bad, and uh, so, Cole! You're being bad. Stop it. Drop that. Ugh. Anyway. Could be rock candy. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh, all right. Anyway, yeah, today we're going to talk about Toshiba's, but before we get into it, man, you should go watch that uh, last week's show if you haven't already. A lot of cool stuff in there. Mike Chi talked a lot about the 4K, Retro Tink 4K. Even talked about, uh, you know, the release date possibly being under probably 60 days, right before Christmas, maybe. So um, that's all great. But hang on one second. Let's go see what Cole's chewing on, because he's he's really getting me geared up. Dummy. Here's the problem with letting your your dog who's got about three brain cells running around who loves to chew crap in a shop he'll just find a push pin like this and chew on it because he's just ugh, a, go a goober so definitely had to stop him that time <laughs> yeah he would have been worse off if he'd have swallowed a push pin trust me sorry I'm sure that blasted your ears a little bit everybody but anyway Back to it. Let's see if Cole's back. Yeah, he's fine. See? He just gave it up. Now he's looking for something else to chew on. He doesn't want to chew on all those toys. So, the show was fun last week, and I want to give you a heads up, too, on some things. Remember uh, this. Let me show you something else, too. 
let's go over here to the desk not desktop dashboard if we um, let me make sure I'm still on here yep if we go over here maybe we could go to Twitter and I can show you some of the things I actually was able to fix uh, this this week so believe it or not this right here is the PVM from the f show last week. Hey, Koala, it's your PVM they're talking, talking about here. This is the L5 I was working on last week with all the discoloration that we ran through the tester. And uh, as you can tell, I got the colors all balanced. Let me see if I have, I should have a better photo somewhere. Um, maybe in a drive folder. Let's see, yeah. So if you remember, all the colors were out of whack. They looked awful. Look at it now. Got it all fixed up. Now the big problem, I'm, uh, and we're working to figure this out, there's a couple people who have reached out to me on Twitter and talked about reprinting this deflection board bracket right here. And that would be nice to have a good replacement. There's a, there's a print file for it. And this is... Uh, this is how it looks now. Like, all the colors are really good. You can see they're all the same. I mean, the green's a little hot, but it hasn't been adjusted or anything. I just got it back to normal colors. And what I had to do was I had to actually... This was incredible. I had to uh, go in and adjust the yoke rings. And they had never been adjusted before. So in the travel, there was such a hard bang or something, or something magnetic came into such contact with the television, sorry, the PVM, that it caused... A complete like swapping of the magnetism on the purity and the original settings that were from the factory that had been good for the whole life of the PVM were no longer good so I had to break those uh, back to uh, adjustment wheels on the yoke just still have that yoke I don't think I do let me go grab a yoke real quick Cole might be over there no well let me go grab a yoke real quick So here's what I did just to give you a little bit of a, an idea. This was, let's say this is the yoke. Well, the, the two rings closest to the yoke right here, they're a set of rings and those are your purity rings. And changing these is really gonna affect the purity on your, color, on your screen. It'll make the colors look inverted. It'll do all kinds of nut stuff and it has to be set right. So it was set from the factory and then I marked it with a Sharpie where it was set from the factory and then I broke it all free and I started adjusting it myself and within 20 minutes I got it cleared up and that's working great. So we're going to go through and do a full restoration on it. Uh, so, But that was the first time I'd seen that happen that I can actually think of where, uh, where the actual like purity of the set was completely bonked out from just traveling and whatever UPS did to it. So that was the first success story. The other success story was one that I don't have pictures for you, but maybe I'll bring them to a future episode because it's another PVM that I'm going to be working on. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a little bit of a PVM story time with me. It's only take five minutes, but I swear it's a cool uh, discovery. It's a cool thing. It's just, you know, we can leave this picture up kind of because if we look at, not that one, sorry, this picture, this is about the same thing that happened with the other set. Um, and so, uh, again, if you guys are coming in here and you've not done, done so yet, I know I, I always ask this, please do the, uh, do the thing where you hit the like button for me. It will help the show. And anyway, so this one's fixed, but let's talk about this other PVM and then we'll get into our main topic. So the one I was working on yesterday was brought in. It was a 1351Q and it had just a really super dim tube um, and so I got it in the shop. The guy who owned it was here with me. He dropped it off and we were talking about it. And I said, you know, um, I will run a BK467 tube analysis on it with the tube, an tube analyzer that you saw in the troubleshooting video for the PVM you're seeing on your screen. So we did that. We went and we ran a tube analysis. I got it all hooked up. Because again, the tubes looked like looked extremely dim. Like the colors on the red were probably about the A. Colors on the green were at like eight. Blue was 
also at like A or B. So it was very dim. Everything was ugly. The colors were bad. And uh, after trying to adjust a little bit of stuff, like uh, the voltage going into the flyback, you know, the screen voltage, that didn't change the look of the tube any. So we hooked up the BK467. I ran the emissions test, and boy, it was just way low. Like nothing besides, uh, for some reason, red looked the worst, but it was reading better than the other two colors. So red was maybe the highest, but every single one of them was in the bad red zone, saying bad, bad, bad emissions on all three. And so I said, you know, hey, let's try, if you're willing to, let's try this clean and balance procedure, because this tube has never had a rejuvenation done to it before I could tell that. And I said, maybe we'll get some good results on this smaller tube that's from Sony. So the client agreed, and we immediately switched over and ran a clean and balance, which on the BK467, a clean and balance is a procedure that is a light rejuvenation. So it's still kind of a rejuvenation, but it's not throwing as much voltage as the rejuvenation mode is when you go to that mode on the, so it's like you try that first. And if that doesn't work, you can move to rejuvenation. So I, of course, warned him that it could short his tube out, and uh, but we decided it was just the tube was no good without trying it. So we went ahead. I cleaned and balanced all three of them, and surprisingly, there was a little bit of a jump on the blue and the red. Like it came up a little bit, and then it fell back to where it was in like there's a yellow gauge on a range on the gauge. But the green was doing nothing. Like it came up and popped back down and it was just like barely registering, doing nothing. Every time I'd, I tried it twice then, I ran the clean and balance a second time after I did another test and the blue and red went way good. I couldn't believe it. They went way good. Like they jumped all the way up to good. And uh, I may have a photograph of how it looks afterwards if I can find that for you. But, uh, let me see if I can find anything like that. So the blue and the red jump up to good, but the green still stays down there in the dead zone. And I'm like, what the heck? So we plug the CR. I said, let's plug the monitor back up and let's see if uh, there's a something like a uh, if there's any change on the screen when we turn it on. Okay. So we turned it on and I mean, we plugged the neck board back in, hooked up a video signal, brought up the 240p test suite and the red and blue looked awesome, but the green just looked, it looked like a little bit worse than we started. Not only that, it started to do this weird banding issue. And uh, the best way I can describe it is if I, I don't have a, I wish I would have taken pictures. This is so dumb of me not to, but I had the client here and I want to make sure I did everything right. So if it happens in the future, I will take pictures. But the best way I can describe it is this green started to band where it was actually like going above its normal rate spot where it was starting to cause everything to converge and blow out that had it's like the white looked bad, blue and red looked perfect. It was just the green, it started banding. So I had, I was like, man, this is not looking good. So we decided to, uh, we decided to jump over to the rejuvenation. I said, well, let's just try the rejuvenation on the green. Uh, the red and blue are testing good. We ran one more test. I said, let's just try the rejuvenation procedure, which the rejuvenation procedure is like much more voltage. It's like the higher end of the voltage and it will send zaps through the tube. And I've shown that before on some testing we've done on a tube episode here. And I did that. And then I ran a test and unbelievably all of them started testing in the good zone. And what you saw on that picture right there is that's how the screen looks now. I took a picture after it and it's been running for like six hours, six hours like this. And it's looking perfect. I couldn't believe it. All the emissions now test great. And um, when I bring that one down into the shop, maybe work on, we'll work on it live and do another emissions check on the tube just to make sure it's still holding up but it has been holding up strong and it's the best and uh, most significant rejuvenation I've ever been able to pull off. Like that one has worked 100% looks like. So I was very happy and it's just verification that the BK467 can, can 
actually rejuvenate a Trinitron tube. So thanks for listening to that little story. We did save that PVM. So both these PVMs you see are going to be restored. They're both in the restoration process. Uh, so that was kind of the success story from what's happened to this point this week. So thanks again, everybody. I'm going to go through and give you guys some shout outs, man. You guys have been awesome here in the chat. I mean, there's tons of people here. Mega Cards, Brian Harmon. Thank you for coming in. Stupid, ugly. <laughs> thank you for coming in. Zelbitas, Koalakoa, thank you for being here. Dwight Dixon, welcome back. Finakichi, welcome in. Uh, let's see who else we have here. We have, I know I've seen some other people come in. Zero Sleep, welcome in. Thank you for coming. Mini Hakero, welcome. Aethriol Meowstick, welcome in. Snuffer Stuffer, hey there, buddy. Ronnie S, welcome back. Mick Giants Orbiting, ZEF Core. Mickey again, Buried Bits, Cozy Cathodes, there you are, Edward, welcome in, thank you to see you, or thank you for being here, show, Dwight Dixon, let's see, sorry to keep doubling up, Plate Fork, I think I've just gotten about everybody, if you want to shout out, hey Ray Cerrone, good to see you, and Raymond, Raymond with the Wu-Tang, Grail's Hobbies, welcome in, the reference, hey, and James Boone, welcome in, Mick, or Mickey, or Mike, welcome in too, so there it is, Fresh run of shout outs for everybody. I uh, thank you for being here and um, I hope you all have helped out by hitting the like button for me. I'm sure you have. Feel free to continue chatting amongst yourself. You guys are awesome in the chat. They always, I always see people talking about almost deeper issues sometimes than I get into here. So that's awesome. I'm glad you guys can help figure these things out uh, while you're in here too, because this is just a community. And today, sex shit. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, Cousin Hubert, Retro Gaming. Welcome. Bonjour. Jackie Craft. Thank you. All right. So let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on today. Make sure that I don't have... Oh, no. Ah. My daughter's sick. I just got a text saying my daughter has a fever. And my wife's going to get her. So... When she gets here, we may have to shut the show off. Golly, that was unexpected. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, but yeah, so she has a fever, so that's no good. So we'll see. Um, all right, I wasn't expecting that, but it happens. You have a kid. So that means we need to bust forward, bust forward and get into this main topic, okay? Fred Zombie, hey. We gotta bust forward and get into the main topic and get moving. Okay, so welcome in, everybody. This is the time where I'll put the... Uh, timestamp for the main topic. We're about 18 minutes in, and I, I appreciate all you, you know, hoping, you know, well wishes for. I, I hope so too. I hope so a lot. So, Toshiba, uh, here we go. It's the one we're looking at today is the MD13P1, and it's a 13 inch CRT. It has stereo audio. Stereo audio, there's a plus. And it has a DVD player built into it right here. And then a lovely bubble shaped tube. Awesome, right? Everything's great so far. We love it. It's even got some stuff like Dolby Digital and DTS uh, sound on the machine. And uh, there's so much that to love about Toshiba. And I want to talk about kind of my love-hate relationship with Toshiba because there's a lot of them that I absolutely think are fantastic. And then there are others that I look at and at first I think might be great. And I wonder why they might have cut some corners on some of them. Because you will find when you delve into Toshibas that not all of them are the same. You're not going to get the same consistency you're getting when you buy JVC stuff usually. Or, of course, Sony. So I'm trying to like figure out where Toshiba plays in this. They really have no presence in the professional atmosphere. And you'll often find a lot of the times they're made with Orion parts. Which Orion was never known as the high-end television maker either. And yes, that is Cole snoring. If you're wondering. <laughs> so. I'm, I mean, the thing that's great about them. 
like this one I really like because it's a bubble tube again, everything. But the problem is, is the best, the best input you're getting is this input right here on the front. Because the only input on the back is, and I don't want to actually roll this around yet, uh, because it's sitting on top of a PVM down here, which is funny enough. So I, uh, I'm going to turn it on here in a second, but the problem with this one is that's the only input you really get. You get a coaxial in the back for RF, but you get no... Uh, oh, uh, Philips and Magnavox made some really good ones. Tukey, Tukey. And Orion made some okay TVs too, you know? So, uh, but again, the best input we've got is this one built in. And so it's confusing. Another very bad thing about this set is you have to have... Uh, I don't understand why they did this, but you have to have the ma or the manual or I'm sorry, a remote control to fully use the DVD player. So there's not like a select button, okay? So you know you get into a DVD and it has a nice big menu and it says like chapters or it even just says play. If there's no select button on this, so you can't just select okay play. You have to, this only says press play, and I've tried so many times, if there's not a built-in play on the DVD, you can't get it to play. It'll just sit there in the menu, and you can never get it to change. So that's extremely frustrating, because I didn't have the remote for this one. So one of the first things we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to test out this replacement remote. This is not even the official remote. I got this off of eBay. And that on here, that's what the official remote looks like that Toshiba remote right there. Well, this one is apparently coded to do just about everything that one does. And it's got a nice index here because I couldn't find the replacement remote on there. And I wanted to get as close to the original as possible to go with this television. And so that's what I have here. So uh, the first thing, I've never even tried this remote. Uh, so if it doesn't work, then we'll see. Uh, but. Hey, Chris. And the reference. Welcome in. So this thing takes triple A batteries, two of them. So let's go ahead. This is my battery bag. Get all those batteries down in there. It's like all triple A and double A's. I'm not very organized with them. Here's one. Let's, let's try to get a couple. It should be good. The old copper tops. I don't know if... It says QC passed. It says, oh, we got a QC man to check this out, or woman. There we go. Bonus, right? <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll have some treats here. Let's go back and check out the uh, TV. And maybe we'll get to power on by just putting the remote control batteries in. Uh, it does have a slot for a screw back here, and there's actually like a, look at this, there's actually, I guess you could program this. Makes sense. Check it out, there's like a little, um, it's gonna be hard to see, sorry. But down in this hole right here, there's a, a USB input in that hole right there, next to the QC sticker. Hey Mark. Hey, Jake is way black. Welcome in. You made it. And let's just see what happens, right? This is, I've never tried, I swear I've never tried this remote. Let's, let's go over, and it's, it should pop on if it's right, because it's plugged in. Oh, look at that. I see the red indicator, I hear the, the fuzzy electrons buzzing. Hey, yo, look at there, look at there. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to buy a universal remote, Jackie. I wanted to get one that was like the original, and they didn't have the original. And so this one, I believe, is some kind of universal remote that they've programmed uh, to be close enough to fit all these. Like, it's it's got uh, a list of different Toshiba's televisions, all the MD series. from a, There's a 9, 13, 20, and a 14. FP, which I'm not sure what the FP, maybe that's a flat one. So we've got some really bloomed out vision there. Now that was one of the other things too I couldn't get in 
And I was going to see if I could get the picture quality to come down. Look at this. Let's see what happens here. What I really wanted to do was get the, look at that. See the brightness. Somebody came in here and turned the brightness to heaven high setting. There we go. That's great. All right, so we're already helping out a little bit. Let me turn it even down more. Maybe you can see it better on the screen. If I turn it way down. How about that? Let me try turning that down too. Okay, let me remove it. If I can exit. Where's the exit? Exit. Hmm. Well... There's exit. Well, it's not doing anything. So, that's interesting. How do I get this out of here? It says cancel. Return. So on my remote, I need to hit return for cancel. If I find... Oh, that's return. Oh, shift. There's a shift button. No. Oh. So that's, that's just making it go back. Up, down, left, right, cancel, and menu. So let's shift menu. I'm not sure what's going on here. That's crazy. Because it's not... It's not letting me get out of the menu now. So maybe that isn't so great. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? And this is the frustrating thing about the... Like, how stupid is this television? This... <laughs> Like, come on, don't be this dumb. I'm not. I'm not giving up yet, everybody. Don't worry. Uh, but th th this is this is ridiculous. Because I don't want to change my settings. I want to keep them. All right. Hang on a second. Let me let me see what's going on here. Um, I'll be right back with you guys. All right, all right. Sorry, sorry. I don't know. Um, oh, look, it went away. It went away on its own. I guess I just had to be patient. But let's pull it back up, because I don't like that. Now it won't even come up. Let's see. Oh, maybe... Let me try to... Maybe I'm not aiming it close enough. Yeah, this is... This is frustrating. Because see, now it won't even let me get in the menu. It did disappear by itself, but yeah, it's not like now. It's doing some function, yeah. It's crap though. It's not, it's not nearly as good as the original would be. It's definitely trash. So it sucks, let's face it. Because like now, it won't even open the menu at all. Let's press shift in menu. No, nothing. So the menu like timed itself out and then uh, won't do anything now. That's interesting. So
So let's try, I mean, this is just unbelievable, right? So I'll try top menu button, nothing. That's very disappointing. This person's going to get a terrible review on eBay for their product. I mean, I'm not going to return it. I'm just going to give it a bad review because it sucks. <laughs> but that's a frustrating problem, Toshiba. Let's see if we can at least get this silly DVD player to work. So if I do DVD player, how do I even get it to DVD? I don't know. You can turn it to line. I, I don't know. Let's even see. I, it's so let's try try AV line line. Now now let me try menu. Nothing. So we've been locked out of menu. Whatever I've done, I've locked the menu out. And. I, want, I just want to see if we can try to get a DVD to even play on this thing. New batteries. The batteries are fine. It's every other button's working still. Let's put in... Let's try this. We're going to try bonus disc 2 of Arnold's Greatest, The Running Man. Let's have the special edition... This is on full screen. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this is super lame. Lame. This this is like... When it comes to a television, it's frustrating. They give you all these features and then they lock it basically behind a paywall. Right? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Like, I mean, they were, they were ahead of the game. Toshiba, when it came to like... Creating some early on uh, paywalls, I guess. We could give them credit for that. All right. Let's see if that gives us anything else. Nothing. I've got a DVD in there. Maybe it's auto-sensing. Let me take the, this out and see what happens. Let me take out the... Uh, nothing. Oh, my gosh. I don't get it. Let me see if there's a button on the back. <laughs> there's nothing! Nothing on the back. Nothing on the back, folks. Golly, what a turd. I don't know what's more disappointing, this television or this uh, remote. So, I, I don't know. I don't even know how to get it into m remote mode. or menu mode. Let's see. DVD menu. So it says press of course it says press the stupid menu button which it's lighting up but it's not it's not doing anything man. Oh. Well this this whole stream's been pretty terrible so far. I'm sorry everybody. Just not I was hoping it would be a good a good opportunity today and we're getting really skunked. But that's, that's why Toshiba, I put, we need to talk about Toshiba and the bad of Toshiba. Because it, it has very much bad qualities. Like the Magnavox I have, that I'll try to bring that one next time, it's much better than this one. Let's, uh, yeah, this is just crap. There's a DVD in there, but I can't get it. Oh! Now the stupid thing to say is to... Let's see what happens. Does this have a menu? And this isn't even probably one with a menu, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I didn't want this to just jump into the movie. I was thought this disc had like extra features on it, but it might not. Look at, yeah, here's some features, right? This should be features. There we go. Now, this might be great. I mean, this thing, if you've had, now see, look, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. 
This is why this TV sucks. Right now I'm on Play Movie. Let me turn the lights down a little bit. Maybe that'll help. It's on Play Movie. It's it's hard to see because it's colors like green or something. I don't know if I can... And of course, you know, I can't get back in the menu to change the color. Let's see if we can get this to go. Oh, Richard Dawson. Look, see, and if I hit skip, it does nothing. It does nothing except... Says hand. No, you can't do that. How about play? Oh, well, this one's not fair because it actually lets me play. Well, I don't want to do that. So let's go. Because if I play, you know what's going to happen. Oh, get out of here. Oh, don't. No, I can't do that. How about this? Um, Come on, you're going to kill me. You're going to get me killed here. I got a stupid... Stupid TV. I gotta get this thing off here before I get a copyright claim from Paramount Pictures or something. Oh, let's, uh, let's see here. Thank you for making me... Oh! Hey, we got back to the DVD menu. Alright. There we go. So, let's see. Yeah, I mean, at least it works for that. Let's see special features. That's what I wanted to kind of get into. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. The game th Meet the Stalkers. That's this, this is like completely uh Let's see if I can turn this headlight over. Ooh, this might be a little bit more fun. If I could just get the If I could just get Oh, I need to focus it. I need to focus it. <sighs> what a mess. There we go. Captain Freedom. Damon Killian. All right, so there you have it. You know, there's, uh, you can, oh, look at this. You got Dynamo, Buzzsaw, Captain Freedom, Sub-Zero, Buzz, I mean, this, you can't see it on there, though, because it looks so bad on the picture. Let me see if, hmm. Yep, this is just not exactly working, because I can't, the problem is, is I want to go back to the, isn't that funny how it let me go into that uh, TV, television menu one time, and and now it's not. So let's let's try to get in the sub menu, maybe once, and we'll see if that works. So it says go on the, to get into the sub menu. I'm referring to this. I'm referring to this service mode list. <sighs> and. Uh, all mode you can get into the adjustment menu let's just see if this works volume down and nine volumes all the way down so sometimes you got to do it like let's see it's either but on the remote or it's on the set and the remote simultaneously like there it is you got to have the remote to open the TV's service menu and I mean this is gonna be a nightmare to work through probably but you can there you go you could change everything here uh, is there a brightness I don't really wanna oh there is see there's a sharpness sub bias and then there's a bunch of other stuff in here. Sharpness, oh, the brightness max, brightness low, contrast max, contrast low. Okay. So you can get into the service menu. I just don't understand. I'm gonna turn it off for a second. Look at it, it's not even wanting to turn itself off now. This goofy television. Ugh. 
So I, I just don't know what to think of this thing. It's very frustrating, especially since the regular menu button worked once. D I mean, I'm holding down the menu button now. It's not doing anything. That's what it is, a good old Ryan Toshiba. Ugh. Very sus. PO 17. All right, guys. Well, well, unfortunately, these things happen, right? Unfortunately, life is getting in the way of the show, and TV's reprogramming the remote, maybe. It's uncalled for, it's unnecessary, and it's not acceptable. So, this is a sub thing. I'm, I'm actually selling this wonderful TV at the convention this weekend. So, I doubt anybody uh, that's in the chat right now will be there and be buying this television. Everything on the front is working correctly, Matt. It's just, there's no... There's no OK or Select button on the front and there's no menu button on the front and they are uh, they were working before and, and like at the beginning the menu button pulled right up and it might come back up sometime but it's definitely not doing it for me now like nothing no response from the menu at all okay nothing um, but I'll, uh, I'll come back and, oh yeah, I'll sign it and throw it. <laughs> yeah, I'll sign it and throw it in the trash. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, sorry this was kind of a dud of a episode, but that's kind of what Toshiba does to you sometimes. It proves itself to be a dud. And that's probably why they never had the cojones, the cojones to try to get into professional uh, video equipment like JVC and Sony. They left that stuff to the big boys. Okay, big boys. They they could barely handle anything. They had to outsource all their work to Orion and pretend to be high end. Next time we'll look at a Magnavox and we'll see the quality difference there and uh, how much better a regular remote is. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to end it for today's show because uh, my daughter's going to be here soon and I'm going to have to take care of her and hopefully she's okay. I think everything's okay. She just had a little bit of a temperature. So anyway, I thank you for joining me today on this wacky, wonderful venture into the bunker. Uh, I hope you all have a great day. I'm sorry to leave you so early, but it is what it is. I'll see you. I'll try. I'll, you know what? I'll try to come back tomorrow. Okay. If I can, I'll try to come back tomorrow and actually do something, fix something. Because now we're in a, a rut of not fixing thing. All right, buddy. All right, everybody. Thank you again. And I'll see you next.